True. Yeah, man, we finna uh, break this paperwork, this affidavit down slowly, very, very slowly. And we finna dissect these dates, this time, and we trying to figure out who snitched first and who did the snitching by names and times. Let's go. The facts of this case are as follows. On Wednesday, November 11th, 2020, at approximately 11.56 a.m., Dallas police officers responded to a shooting call on South R.L. Thornton Freeway, northbound over East Clarendon Drive, Dallas, Dallas County, Texas. Numerous witnesses who were forced to stop in traffic on the freeway observed a suspect with his face covered, chase and shoot, complainant Noble with a rifle. After the shooting, suspect White, key one White, Banzo Bling, fled in a black Chevy Camaro, northbound from the offense, offense location. Suspect White fired multiple rounds and multiple citizens vehicles were struck along with witness Graham. Okay, there's a name right there. So, of course, this person is going to be at the trial. Whoever this witness Graham is. They don't give a first name, but they do give a last name. And that is a sloppy police work at its finest. You don't put witness's name, but I noticed that a lot in this affidavit. Witness Graham who was actually injured by a bullet fragment while seated in his vehicle. So it's a guy. So you can learn a lot from an affidavit. So witness Graham will definitely be a witness at the trial if you got hit by a bullet fragment. And since they say he, he is, that means you a guy, not a girl. Let's go. Complaining Noble was transported to Methodist Hospital where he was where he was pronounced deceased. Now, a lot of people say Mo three got hit in the head. And uh we see the guy in the video doing chest compressions. Blood would be coming out of his mouth if that was true. Now he was transported to Methodist Hospital where he was pronounced deceased. Not on the scene not in the ambulance, not DOA, but when he got to the hospital. That's not adding up, but let's keep going. Detective Anderson, number 7788. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a Detective Anderson. Somewhere I've seen that name before, but I, I'm not gonna get into that right now. Detective Anderson, I'm taking notes though, because it's time to go back and see what we miss. Detective Anderson, along with other detectives, responded to the crime scene and interviewed several witnesses. Crime scene responded, processed the scene, and, collect and collected evidence. A witness in a nearby vehicle provided dash camera video of the shooting. What you mean, the 18 wheeler behind the gold Honda? A witness in a nearby vehicle well that's where they claim they got their footage from the 18 willow um, a lot of people I mean we see a guy riding by recording but this is a dash cam video dash camera video so maybe the 18 will it may not be but we're gonna take it real slow right now I'm just reading a witness was interviewed and stated that suspect Devin Brown was upset over a relationship that involved complainant Noble and the witness. Now see that statement right there, a witness was interviewed. When and at what time? What date? The same day? Because uh, the girls say they went down to the police by themselves. So let's read this one more time. A witness was interviewed and stated that suspect Devin Brown was upset over a relationship 
that involved complaining noble and the witness. Now, that's that's this see this affidavit will get somebody whacked because that's telling you a witness. We we know who they're talking about. They're talking about the baby mom was upset over a relationship that involved complaining noble and the witness. Okay. Well Who was the witness? They talk, I mean, that's self-explanatory. The witness and Noble and the witness. So that's the same person that's giving the statement. It's talking about the baby daddy being mad over me and MO3. Duh. The witness, we're going to gonna call her baby mama from this point on. The, the baby mama, I mean, you know, the witness to be to be correct, the witness informed detectives that suspect Devin Brown Jr., also known as Beep, contacted a juvenile witness by phone multiple times prior to the murder. The witness learned that during the phone call, suspect Devin Brown asked the juvenile witness if complaining Noble was at that location. The witness provided the phone number that suspect Devin Brown used to contact the juvenile witness. Okay, this is why I had to go back. Because now somebody answered me this question. Did old girl Jay, Josie, did she have, is she the one that had kids with Devin Brown or was it? one of the other sisters that I am not clear on, but that's for, that's why I'm going back slowly, but surely. And I'm taking notes this time. So somebody answered me that in the comment section. Was Josie the one that had kids with Devin Brown or was it one of the other sisters? Let me, let me, let's clear that up. Okay. Pause for a minute, y'all. Need some water. Okay. I'm back. <clears throat> I'm back, y'all. Now, let's go back up to the top of this affidavit, and uh, let's get to this question right here. Remember, I'm doing it slowly and strategically, and i am got my notepad, so, man, let's, let's add all this up. Now, at the top of this affidavit, it says, what happened to Mo3 on November 11th, and they specifically said numerous witnesses who were forced to stop in traffic on the freeway observed a suspect with his face covered chase with his face covered chase and shoot Mo3 with a rifle after the shooting suspect white now they went from face covered to immediately after the shooting suspect white Fled in a black Chevy Camaro, northbound. Suspect white fired multiple rounds in multiple cities of the So how do they go and then witness Graham? So how do they go from suspect with his face covered in the same affidavit immediately to suspect white? Immediately. And then the witness, Graham. Graham however you want to call it, who was injured. Since the dude had on a mask, this would make, wouldn't this make you think I would be, this would make, this probably would make Kimon think that he was coming home. Uh, he said he would be home real soon, about a month, two months ago. That didn't happen. But if I was at a preliminary hearing, I would raise these questions myself. Now, preliminary hearing is not a trial. A trial, you have to prove somebody guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. A preliminary hearing, you just need probable cause. I don't think this would hold up at a trial. So, we got to, this case going to boil down to the witnesses. the witnesses because you can't go from a mask i would beat that in trial and i'm just saying 
We all want justice for more three, but we got to be logical right now. That's why I'm taking my time and I'm asking the questions that I want the comment section to answer. So please get in the comment section because at this rate right here, I would be this and try myself and I would be my own lawyer to do it just to be real. You can't, you can't tell me I did anything if somebody had a mask on. You can't say that with me. I don't want to hear nothing about no physical stature or none of that. You, this is a trial. You have to prove me guilty beyond reasonable doubt. And these are questions. A question is reasonable doubt. Yeah, case closed. Just part one, y'all. Let me let me take it slow. So we're gonna go down. And part two gonna be about the second. We're gonna go through the whole damn affidavit. We're gonna find out who snitched first, what the hell is going on, and we're gonna do it slowly. True.